today's show, we're on the big island of Hawaii for the Big Island Festival for some wonderful food, great wine, and some spectacular resorts. So stay with us. Best of Taste, Travels with John Serge. Delicious recipes, outstanding wines, and unique lifestyles with your host, Chef John Serge. Aloha and welcome to Hawaii's Big Island as we come to you from the breathtaking Kahala Coast. Best of Taste has been invited here for the annual culinary extravaganza known as Hawaii's Big Island Festival. During the four days of the festival, there are six world-class resorts, including the Hilton Waikoloa Village and the Hapuna Beach Prince Hotel, hosting over 40 events. Hawaii's Big Island Festival also offers informative agricultural tours, golf events, spa packages, culinary demonstrations, wine tastings, and best of all, fantastic food prepared by talented chefs. The festival highlights the expertise of Food & Wine Magazine's best new chefs. Eight of the top ten chefs traveled here from all over the U.S. to participate and serve up their fantastic culinary creations and they've been assembled with some of Hawaii's finest chefs to help showcase incredible island products. One of the gourmet tours provided us with a first-hand look at state-of-the-art aquaculture facilities situated on the grounds of the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii. One operation we visited, Kona Blue Water Farms, raises a native species called Kona Kampachi. Kampachi is best known as a sashimi fish or sushi fish, which is served uh, raw with various presentations. Uh, although presently, most of our market, they cook the fish. The companies involved in aquaculture utilize surface and cold, deep ocean water that's pumped in, and they produce gourmet seafood for Big Island chefs and also for export. Some are also doing clam and oyster starts, which get shipped out to other locations for maturation and harvest. The agricultural tours, held in conjunction with Hawaii's Big Island Festival, offer a glimpse of island farming practices and history. And the Festival Pavilion, located at the Hapuna Beach Prince Hotel, highlights local growers and the purveyors of Hawaii's finest products. Is this is a rambutan. These are uh, from Southeast Asia, and uh, we grow a lot of longan here, also known as dragon eye. Uh, we have star fruit, carambola. In addition to all the displays and information at the pavilion, participants had the chance to pick up additional tips during the culinary demonstrations. These events feature several of Food & Wine Magazine's best new chefs. A lot of what we do, um, a lot of what cooking becomes for me is a lot of sights and sounds and smells. And uh, I mean, it sounds a little weird, but the food will talk to you. There are also wine and beverage experts on hand for special tastings and to pair fine wines with a wide variety of dishes being served. For the opening of the festival, we're treated to an upcountry chef's tour, featuring lots of Big Island products and the outstanding culinary team at the Hilton Waikoloa Village, led by executive chef Wilhelm Perngruber. And the capping event for the festival, called Under the Hula Moon, takes place at the magnificent Hapuna Beach Prince Hotel. Hawaii star chefs unite with Food & Wine Magazine's best new chefs to prepare a showcase of dishes that feature a wide variety of Big Island products. It's um, a sashimi of kajiki, which is a Pacific Blue Marlin, a marinated hearts of palm, Thai basil, and tomato water. I'm doing a, a jumbo lump blue crab salad with lemon, vinaigrette, avocado, fragment herb, pink peppercorn, and pomegranate. Chinatown duck, scallion pancakes, and some cilantro on it, plum sauce. <laughs> Creamy polenta served with a fricassee of truffled mushrooms. Enjoy. Cheers. Coming up, we'll continue the Big Island Festival tour, and I'll join Chef Willie as he prepares two special dishes from the menus at the Hilton Waikoloa Village. Stick around for more best of taste from Hawaii's Big Island. We're back for more best of taste from the Hilton Waikoloa Village on Hawaii's Big Island. 
Well, we're here with Chef Willie in front of the lagoon, right? The lagoon, yeah, the, the saltwater lagoon, actually, and the, the beach over there. Oh, it's, it's, it's a gorgeous setting here, you know. But before, we're going to get to the food, obviously, but we got to talk a little bit about last night, because that food was incredible. I mean, every station, the, it was so, the, the way you created it, and it, it tell us a little bit about how you did that. Well, what, I want, what we wanted to do with that uh, event is we took a menu, a 10-course menu, mm -hmm. and instead of serving it, uh, course by course, we set it up in stations, mm -hmm. but cooked right in front of you. So, if somebody wanted to have a menu, the ten they would just menu. go station to station yeah. and sample. And each station had three items. I did an event like this before with more than three items per station, mm -hmm. but it ki becomes kind of taxing, and you don't have the time to spend on each individual well, I'll dish. Tell you, I mean, it, three per station is a lot, and the quality of the food last night was just, it was outstanding, the creativity of the dishes and, and the wines that were mashed with it. It was, it was beautiful. Well, listen, this first dish you're going to do is, because uh, we're, again, with the, the Hawaii regional thing and, the, and the, of course, the, the foods of, of the islands, but why don't you explain a little bit about what this well, is Well, this be. is a, <coughs> a very simple ahi poke. Poke has come to the mainstream in the, in the U.S. as mm -hmm. well already, especially sure. since it was promoted for, on the, the poke festivals and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, this is very, very traditional. The ingredients are very, very simple, and uh, the flavor profile is a little bit on the salty seafoody side because mm -hmm. we, we do put uh, seaweed in there as well. Now, so, you were telling me about, now this is a, a, a nut you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that is, that is a kukui nut. You see those, uh, those black uh, nut right, lace, right. that's mm -hmm. kukui nut. Oh, that's kukui nut. Okay. The inside of that is uh, white in color. Once it gets roasted, after it gets chopped up and roasted, mm -hmm. it becomes this color, uh -huh. uh, a beige brownish color. And that is, if you don't know how to use it, it becomes a laxative. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, be careful with that, will you, for me? All right. Well, it's <laughs> the amount that we put in there is just enough for flavoring, uh -huh. for seasoning, because that's what it is there for, not for anything else. Right, right. Okay, Let's should we get, get started? started? Sure. Uh, we Beautiful start off with a nice red piece of tuna. It has to be sashimi grade because you do, we, we do eat it raw, mm -hmm. so we cannot uh, uh, cover it up by, by cooking it or right. so on. So it has to be sashimi grade. Uh, what we are doing here is cubing it. Poke means actually cube. You know, that's, uh, we were here before, and we were at my brother's house in Maui, if you remember that show, and we were trying to find out what pokey meant, and it means cute. It means cute. That's it doesn't the answer mean, to the question we've been waiting for for a year. It doesn't mean appetizer, because that is poo-poo. That's right, that's right, poo-poo. That is but a poo -poo. means cube. And uh, the other thing, too, is pokey used to be sort of a, uh, part of the expression, a poor man's dish. It was sort of like trimming off. Well, and so chop it up, it, mix it together, right. and get it out the door. Exactly, but now it's really kind of, come into its own and like you were saying su su sashimi grade tuna okay we have well you can use any fish as long sure. as it is the freshest fish that you can buy mm -hmm. uh, we put in some uh, sea salt I put in a touch of let me show of the salt here because sesame oil because that is a very nice flavor this is a red sea salt yeah the color of it is clay uh -huh. it's natural clay it's not a uh, red number 65 or whatever <laughs> <laughs> All natural. Again, and you put a little chili flakes in there. You can put fresh chili pepper in there if you so prefer. Uh -huh. uh, then we have the green onions, a little bit of red onions, the cuckoo nut. A bit of the cuckoo nut, yeah. Yeah, a little bit more. And then we gotta chop, chop some of the, the seaweed that we have here. Mm -hmm. Just some rough chop. If you're a fanatic of uh, cilantro, Experiment with it. Oh yeah. Just play with it a little bit. Yeah. Okay, this is enough. Okay. And then all we gotta do now, besides cleaning up a little bit, making room for the plating, is mixing this thing up. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's what it's supposed to kind of look like, kind of so on the soy dry sesame side. Sesame oil is the only really liquid in here. Right? Yeah, yeah, but very ses especially the soy sauce, very very sparingly. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I looking for? Avocado. I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. And this is how we serve it in uh, the Malolo Lounge, which is our newest addition to this property. It's, a, it's a, our lobby lounge. We do serve uh, pupus or d'oeuvres in the evening uh -huh. with a, a nice selection of uh, imported cheeses and then the local stuff. Uh -huh. 
Wow. And uh, for lunch, we serve some real innovative sandwiches. So this is what I'm doing with the avocado. Just cube so that, it. That's your base for the avocado. Squeeze corn. it out. Okay. You know, it's, it's very simple to get it out of the shell once you have it cubed. Right. We don't need it all, so we don't put it all in there. Mm -hmm. Press it down a little bit, then take our pokey. Put that on the top. Yeah. I would love to use my, my hands for that, but it is TV. Well, but that's The okay. hands is the nicest this, this tool is in like the kitchen. It's like eating at home anyway, so you know. Yeah, it's... the hand is the best tool in the kitchen. You have real good controls over it. And yeah, this is about as much as we want to put in here, so we have a little extra. Now, as you do this, is this recipe in your cookbook? Uh, not exactly this recipe. But there is a pokey recipe, a pokey recipe right. in the cookbook. This is, this we is should a gorgeous be talking cookbook. about the cookbook a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's called uh, 33 Chefs. It's available on the Hilton Waikoloa Village website. Uh -huh. uh, you can also view a few pages on our website. And it benefits uh, Waikoloa Marine Wildlife Fund and Shriners Hospital for Children. Please. So it is, a, it is a very worthy cause. So you not only get a, a great cookbook, but it goes to a good cause. That's that, right. This is a wonderful book. And there's not one page here that does not have a picture, which Pretty is very much. cool. We it's have, a beautiful book. We have every chef's picture in there, and every chef has one recipe in there, uh -huh. which uh, I guess would be called their favorite recipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, God, this is beautiful. Look at this, this is your... Or do. It's simple, but just your, it's, it's elegant looking. Poo -poo. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You're pokey. <laughs> You're pokey. Now, this is wonton skins. Mm -hmm. Wonton skins come in a square form, as you all know. Uh, and that's available in the Asian section of the store. Yeah. yeah. Cut it in half, put in about an inch of uh, oil in a pan, and fry it golden. That's what you get. It's a nice uh, kind of a chip. That's oh, a great, great looking dish. For, huh? We've got one more great recipe coming up. Yes, okay, we do. Ahead. The next recipe is going to be a uh, one pot recipe. You put everything in one pot, steam it up, and, and you're good go. to go. Great. So That's we'll the, the recipes I like. Easy, simple. Stay with us for that one. We'll be right back with Chef's Other Recipe. This is great. Hi, I'm John Sarich, and this is Best of Taste. Come join us as we travel near and far to fantastic destinations. Welcome to Japan, San Francisco, Tahiti, Croatia, Venice. We work with some of the best chefs in the world, demonstrating techniques, sharing recipes, and searching out the freshest local ingredients. Incredible cuisine, fantastic wines, and unique lifestyles, all right here on Best of Taste. Welcome back to Best of Taste, coming to you from Hawaii's Big Island. Well, we're back with the chef, and you know, we, we were talking off camera. I, I think let's go a little bit about ingredients on the island, because we were talking about, you know, in the years past, it was tough to get local things. Yeah, but talk about 30 years back, 30, 40 years back, Hawaii was still in the frozen mahi-mahi and, uh, and uh, that kind of a state. Mm -hmm. it, it was very, and over the years, uh, starting with the Hawaii regional cuisine movement, mm -hmm. and then now with all the creative new chefs that come in, it became a movement that everybody wanted to use mm -hmm. fresh products. And there was, since there was a need created for those products, there were growers going out of their way to satisfy our needs. We have all our greens grown locally now. Mm -hmm. We have fresh heart of palm. We have vanilla grown here. We have cocoa beans grown here that is made into chocolate. That is a single variety cocoa bean chocolate, which is usually not the case in the big chocolate uh, factories right. because you have to blend different uh, uh, cocoa beans in order to make a smooth, round uh, flavor. Uh -huh. For whatever reason, whatever is grown down in Kona makes a real, real good chocolate. It's and not a cheap chocolate. And of course, it makes great coffee, too. But I mean, you know, the so yeah. Then so we have the coffee, of course, yeah. too. Then yeah. we have uh, Otec, which is... Uh, a uh, aquaculture mm -hmm. facility that started off more as a uh, research and development facility uh -huh. and now has grown into a production facility. I mean, seafood out here is the best that you can probably get. We talk about ingredients, but we also talk about ethnic influences we were yeah. talking about earlier. That's right. Uh, this dish has some Portuguese influence. Mm -hmm. I'm putting in the, the broth first because I want to mix, the, mix a, the garlic a, a, a Seafood broth or a chicken broth? Now this is a chicken, chicken uh, okay. stock because when I cook with a strong seafood, like clam is a very strong seafood, 
I do not want to give it any more seafood flavor than there is in okay, already. I want to have him talk about this too because this, this is, is traditional Hawaiian pork. This is very. This is the emu pork. This is uh, uh, called. It's called kalua pig. Uh -huh. Kalua pork. You can fake that pretty well at home. I don't know if you have enough time to talk about the yeah, faking. Yeah, let's, let's of talk it. about it real quick uh, because you see it all over. You know. uh, if you have a uh, big, fairly strong roasting pan, about two, three, three inches deep, and you have a uh, uh, this cabbage. This is cabbage, okay. shredded cabbage, uh -huh. and this is about as much work you have to do for this dish before we put it on the fire. Let's turn the the, the heat on. Yes, it is on. Okay. And all we gotta wait now for is to steam open. Once it's steam open, we turn the heat off, add a little bit of butter, and we're good to go. A couple of sprigs of cilantro and we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Now the Kalua pork, we talked about a roasting pan about three, four inches mm -hmm. deep and the rack, a metal rack right. so to keep the pork so from the bottom. you can use like a turkey, bottom. a turkey roaster would probably work. Kinda, yeah. would work. Uh, either with a lid, or with, you can cover it with aluminum for a light on. You want to line the rack with either tea leaves or banana leaves. Mm -hmm. Then put the meat on there. The meat gets sea salt. Sea salt. Yeah. The, if you don't have access to this kind of sea salt, use kosher salt. Uh, there's what, what also kind of pork would you want to use for this? Butts. Uh, pork butts. Pork, pork the butt, the yeah. neck part. Yeah, it's a nice big or, pork or shoulder. shoulder because you want to have enough fat to muscle ratio in there. Mm -hmm that it actually gives you flavor and that it uh, stays moist uh, right, right. during the cooking process. Seasoning is this, the sea salt, and sprinkle it with a little bit of hickory flavor, the smoke, uh, the oh, liquid, yeah, smoke. Sure, liquid smoke. Yeah. We can buy that in any supermarket, yeah, basically. Sure. And then you cover this thing with a couple more leaves, and then if you have a cover for, the, for that braising pan or that uh -huh. roasting pan, put the cover on it. If not, put aluminum foil on it. Okay. 300 degrees until it falls apart, uh -huh. and you got Kalua pig. And that's basically it. That's it's a Kalua slow pig. roasted pig, so you can kind of. It's more. You don't have to do it in the ground. A, it's more of a steam than this sure, roasted. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, underground it has its own special flavor too, because you put so much leaves and then banana stamps in there uh -huh. over the over the coals, and you get the natural smoke flavor from the from the mm, coals sure. underneath. It it does it's, taste it's, better. But it's great. And if you just falls apart, it's if wonderful. you have a good good sized yard, you can always dig a hole. Six <laughs> by three, by about a foot and a half. Take your own hole. This dish should be perfect for the Pacific Northwest because you folks have great. Uh, clams up. There. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I like this idea of, you know, where you've got the local ingredient and then you, and it's like the Hawaiian, the, the, the pig, and then the kind of that Portuguese influence as well in there. Well, so. we forgot the wine oh, in this put one, some you wine know in I mean? It. Let's put a little wine in it. Put a little Chardonnay. We'll talk about wine later when we end the show. And uh, as soon as this thing is, uh, as soon as the, the clams open up, we're we we basically done with this dish. Now, this is a knockoff of a Portuguese kind of a dish. Mm -hmm. The Portuguese like to cook clams with meat, right. to get especially pork. Uh, Portuguese is a, uh, was a part of a wave of the immigrations that came to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we had the Portuguese, the Chinese, the Koreans, the Japanese, the Filipinos, Mexicans for the cowboy trade. We were talking trade. about, yeah, because of the cowboys. Yeah. yeah. When, when the cattle first came with Captain Vancouver in the late 1700s, uh, King Kamehameha put a, a kapu on those uh, cattle, which means nobody can mess with them. Right. It en ended up becoming such a nuisance that they would eat the grass of the grass huts and they would just trample over the fields and everything. And then uh, in the 1800s, uh, Parker, who was an advisor to the king, mm -hmm. uh, had this great idea of getting permission to, be, uh, to ranch cattle. Uh -huh. That's when Parker Ranch started. Okay. Very, very small, 10 acres he started off with, but with whatever he produced, with whatever he sold, he uh, bought himself more land. And at its peak, it had over 500,000 acres of oh. land in production. Oh I mean, which God. is a big chunk of the Big Island. That's huge. And That's uh, huge. with those immigrations came also, obviously, their native, their, their, their indigenous foods, right. their own way of cooking. Uh -huh. And then they adapted to what was available. Mm -hmm in the islands and uh so you get all that kind of mix of regional foods and ethnic diversity and oh yeah and oh, that, that's the, the nice part about being in hawaii uh in terms of the cooking trade is you have access to the whole pacific rim of flavors yeah. you have the curries from southeast asia you got the lemongrass the kiffer leaves 
you got uh, uh, yes, it's a huge amount of things to play with it, you know, it, it really everything is. is available it to is. us now listen we're going to come back uh, in just a second here because we want to take a look at the finished dish a couple of wine recommendations with the chef and uh, so stay around we'll be right back We're back for more Best of Taste from the Hilton Waikoloa Village on Hawaii's Big Island. Well, Chef, that's the finished uh, hot pot. The, that's the what it Portuguese, is. Portuguese, Chinese, Hawaiian. Ethnic diversity. Ethnic diversity. And great flavors in that, too. And then, of course, the pokey that we did the first dish, and that's, yep. that's wonderful stuff. That's very traditional Hawaiian. But upscale. That's, that's the shimmy grade tuna on there. So Need to be. That has to be. It's beautiful stuff. We talk about wine real quick. Uh, you were mentioning some different wines that would go with the dishes. Yeah, this one we could do a Chardonnay, maybe even a Pinot because there's some bold flavors in there. Even, white or red. Yeah, yeah. Even with the pokey, you don't have to go white. Even though it's a fresh dish, you want to go with something a little bit bold. A Syrah, a, a Pinot Noir would go. Right, and we got two of them today. We brought the Columbia Crest Reserve Syrah and the Reserve Chardonnay from Chateau Saint Michel. But um, like you were saying too, it's really, it's what you want to drink. That's you know? right. It really it's up to you. To it. it's yeah. the, and it has to go, it has to marry with the food and not fight it. Not right. fight it. I agree with you entirely. But I want to thank the Hilton Waikoloa. It's been a wonder, a beautiful hotel, and thanks for their generosity. And, and Willie, thank for your talent. I mean, last night was killer. It was a wonderful event. Did a great oh, thank job. Thank you, John. Thanks very much. Hope to see you again. And yeah. we'll see you next week on Best of Taste. Accommodations for the Best of Taste crew provided by the Hilton Waikoloa Village. Travel arrangements for Best of Taste provided by the Big Island Visitors Bureau. Location arrangements and production support provided by Current Events Public Relations. Aloha and welcome to the Big Island of Hawaii. <laughs> Kyle. Lucky it was not a souffle. <laughs> and Best of Taste traveled here for Food & Wine Magazine's 3rd Avenue, <laughs> 3rd Avenue. See what you did? No, oh, I you did it, man. On today's show, we're on the Big Island of Hawaii. that Well, there's... <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. All right. Cut, cut, cut. All right, take seven. We got one, we got Chef throwing the lid. <laughs> Wrong word. I'll never get this. It's getting worse. We'll get it. Sit. Sit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>